First responders were coming to the scene of overdoses and seeing signs of drug use in the bedroom, usually where the overdose happened. And parents were shocked and clueless. They would say, no, my son doesn't use drugs. My daughter's not an addict. And the first responders were getting frustrated because they saw all these signs that were very clear indicators of drug use. Rally Cares and Code 3 got some grant money and decided to build this trailer as an educational tool. And we made this mock teenagers, late teens, early 20s bedroom. And we filled it with the signs that the first responders were seeing. Addiction typically begins in the bathroom because it's a very private place. You're not gonna walk in on your kid usually in the bathroom. Police love to search the trash, so that's what we start with. The first item we pull out is insulin syringes. Now, unless somebody in your home is a diabetic, it's an item that shouldn't be in your home. So it's a definitely an item that you would ask your, your child about. And they would probably say, oh, my friend Jason is diabetic. Well, then you need to call Jason's mom and confirm that. This is another telltale sign, forged tinfoil. They're gonna put crushed opioid, oxy or something on there, a little bit of water, heat source underneath it, and then inhale the vapors. We've got a Q-tip cotton swab with one end of the cotton missing. There's a myth, fallacy that dates back to the 1960s, 1970s from heroin users that if they would pull the heroin into the syringe through cotton, they thought that it would take out impurities. It's not true. All it does is pull up bits of cotton into the heroin. So they end up injecting cotton as well as heroin into their bodies. And then they end up giving themselves a respiratory infection. People typically take these with their vitamins or supplements or whatever, but they're designed to be swallowed because they dissolve in the stomach. So when you see these empty, that would be a red flag. They're used to transport heroin. The plunger cover of a syringe. Typically the needle cover is disposed of more discreetly. They're going to flush it down the toilet or take it with them and throw it away somewhere else because everybody knows what that looks like. This could be a cap to a marker pen or a glue pen so they feel more secure in just tossing it in the trash. Of course, what stands out to you in here? A spoon, of course. Well, moms would say, oh, I had eight forks, eight knives, and four spoons because they were taking a spoon to the bedroom, the bathroom, and the car. What they would do is put the drug in this bowl of the spoon, a heat source under it to liquefy it, and then draw it up into the syringe and inject it. Well, what happens over time, the black soot builds up on the bottom of the spoon, and then it gets transferred to places in the bathroom. So we see soot here on the edge of the sink, be on light switches, on the edge of the wall here. We don't need an empty box. It's typically going to be thrown away unless it's hiding items for the user. This is a bindle used to transport the heroin because it can be kept in there, folded up real small. It just looks like a gum wrapper. The opioid use does cause constipation. So they would buy the Phillips, take a dose, nothing happens, take another dose, take a third dose, then they get diarrhea. So they buy the Imodium. So if you see these two products in a teenager, young adult's bathroom, to me that's a, a real telltale sign that there might be something going on. These products are real, but sometimes they will take the um, deodorant stick, take it all the way out, cut it off, stuff something down. Any hollow or void space can be made into a, a stash. And then the Coke can. Mom's a mom would say, you know, there was a Coke can all over. It would be in the bathroom and in, in his bedroom. It's actually a personal safe. It's sold online. Take the cap off. There's some drugs and a straw inside. We've got some tourniquets that were used, used for injecting. So we've got some blood on the tie here. Here's one of the shoelaces from the closet. This belt, you don't typically take a belt off and then re-loop it around. So that this is a sign that it's been used as a tourniquet. 
But if they have a, a case, a pencil case, or something like this that they are never without, they never forget this, chances are it's, it's called their work, works case. And this is what they're gonna need to shoot up with when they go make a buy. When he was a teenager in high school, his parents would search his bedroom. He'd be sitting there playing his video games, and that's how we learned about backup battery compartments because he'd be playing his video games and he'd have his heroin right there with him. Alarm clock, we cut the cord off, but it also has a backup battery compartment. This is a working calculator. It's a digital scale. Can of Pringles. There's real, real Pringles in there. But it's also got a works kit in the bottom. Of course, any empty space you would want to look in. But then you also want to look behind things and under things. This is a real uh, flash drive, but from what I understand, um, they're also using false ones that this would pull out and the drugs could be hidden inside. This is a working mouse, but again, it's also a digital scale. Um, and don't neglect the kind of in plain sight idea. So all you have to do is lift and there's something there. This another personal safe. This is kind of our favorite because it looks so real. That comes right apart and there it is. It's all the tops of the baggies of drugs and or they would say I just I would find them all over but just thought they were candy wrappers or something. Search search for pockets. You want to feel first. Don't just stick your hand in where you can't see. It is very educational. People are shocked by what they learn in the trailer because once you know some of these signs, it's impossible to be able to ignore it and be in denial any longer.